Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Couillard. I'm an artist. Usually I'm based in New York, but currently I'm on sabbatical for my teaching job. And I've been living in Berlin, where unfortunately my visa ran out a few weeks ago, so I can't leave the country until my renewal appointment. Um, last time I was at GDC, I got COVID on the first day, so hopefully one of these days I'll be able to make it. Uh, but anyway, thanks so much for having me here. It's really an honor to be included in this session. I wanted to start the first few minutes of this talk just giving a little background to what I do, uh, as maybe I'm coming at the video game thing from a bit of a different angle. I went to art school for my master's, uh, where I studied painting, I did sculpture and animation for a long time, um, and then I just slowly started making games from there after animation. Um, the game I'm working on now that I'll, I'll show you here, it'll be my fifth release on Steam. Every game I make has a, has a gallery or a public component to it. I find it interesting to be in these two worlds, the, the gaming one and the art one, at the same time. I think these two spaces uh, really benefit from each other when, when there's, there's dialogue between them. Um, I found it pretty interesting to, to always have some sort of public display function built into the games I make. Here's my game, Jeff. Uh, it's in a gutted out uh, former Sephora makeup store where I had an art show, um, I had a, a simulation component running all the time, uh, and then also the option to play the game as well on a, on a huge blow-up screen you see there. Also, there were um, animations running on other screens from the game, and also a video of the streamer Vine Sauce playing it, uh, where the chat is getting very angry about the leftist messaging that they think is in the game. Uh, my game Fuzz Dungeon came out during COVID, but I, I did manage to get it up for a Times Square Midnight Moment uh, as an animation with like characters and objects from the game. Um, and I also showed it online with my gallery in New York, Denny Gallery, where it ran as a simulation on a, a computer in their basement. The current project I'm working on is called Escape from Lavender Island. It'll hopefully be done in September this year. And with this project and the last, I've been collaborating with uh, musician Chris Parello as well. The story behind this game is that you wake up in a sort of jail from a dream about a city, uh, only to leave your cell and then realize that that city actually exists and that you are trapped inside of it. The city is run by an eccentric and kind of evil corporation, Lavender, uh, with help from an alien colonial civilization. The world can be accessed in two ways. One is a third-person open-world exploration game, and the other is a movie-length, non-interactive simulation that you, you just watch. In the simulation, a camera slowly goes down the streets of the city, while uh, a whole bunch of paragraph-long stories that are about the lives of the citizens of Lavender Island are being read by actors. Earthquakes, this is Gianni Matragano floods here. passed through with no fanfare. Then one day, Sparla and her husband Jamqua saw the land from the top of a nearby mountain. Uh, the video game or interactive part of this project loosely uses the vernacular of a third-person open-world game by implementing the style of map that GTA made popular as a sort of starting point, uh, a familiar setup to help people understand how to get around easily. But of course, hopefully all that familiarity falls apart as the player explores the weirdness of the city. There are five different neighborhoods, and in each neighborhood you get a faster ship, as well as a different mask that enables you to explore deeper into the game and sometimes deconstruct the world. You get a mask that can momentarily hide objects so you can peek behind them or, or walk right through them. There's also a mask that enables you to have a sort of alien vision so you can see hidden texts and objects. Uh, and a few other masks that enable you to engage with citizens and objects around the town. You can go from point to point and see what happens while uncovering lore, falling in love, and trying to find a way out. The more stuff you do, the more that gets unlocked for more exploration. It's, it's a very simple and, and familiar concept that I'm messing around with and deconstructing a little bit. The game designer Nicole Hay, who I guess is also speaking here in the same session and I'm bummed I can't meet, uh, was playing my, my last game, Fuzz Dungeon, on Twitch uh, a year or two ago and at one point in the playthrough she was thinking about what ultimately uh, she wanted from a video game. And she said something that, that really resonated with me and I still remember. Um, she said it was just simply to be surprised. I thought that really summed up the extent of my game design goals. I'm just trying to create surprising moments to keep people engaged with the world as a way to talk about other ideas. The music, I think, is also another way this is done. Uh, and I want to take a minute to listen to a little of the music that Chris makes that works in, in unexpected ways with the more lo-fi graphics of the game to set a tone that I really like. It's, it's both a little emo, but it's also funny at the same time. 
just like life. You know? This project will also be part of an installation at Denny Gallery in New York in May next year. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm really interested in bringing art into games and games into the art world. So I think it's useful to take a quick second and, and talk about what I mean by art and, and games in this context, like how I'm defining those things. There could be a lot of definitions for art, obviously, but a, a very concise and uh, you know broad one that I tell myself a lot that I got from a professor of mine, Matthew Ritchie, uh, is that it's a space where you make analogies to things, and in doing this, new ideas are generated or old ones are recuperated. The, the simple definition of a game for me is just simply something that's interactive and entertaining, or a video game, at least in this context. Um, they're good at holding your attention. Sometimes these two worlds become a bit closed off, and, and communication outside of these systems becomes a bit difficult. Um, I like it when art tries a little bit to hold my attention, and, and I appreciate it when games have relatable analogies to real life that, that can bring about new ideas, rather than just trying to entertain me to, to sell me a thing. One major analogy I was thinking about with this game is the sort of weird and made-up experience of living in a city. Uh, in the book The Dawn of Everything, the anthropologist David Graeber says, humans tend to live simultaneously with 150 odd people they know personally, and inside imaginary structures shared by perhaps millions or even billions of other humans. A world of possible relationships with its own rules, roles, and structures that are held in the mind and recalled through the cognitive work of image making and ritual. I like this idea that a city is a sort of shared hallucination that all its members are having together. You know, we all see this place we inhabit in a similar enough way that we're able to live as a group together. Uh, but if it's a hallucination, if it's a thing that we all make up together, even though we don't all know each other, Graeber goes on to say that that means we should be able to make it in any way that we want. And I think we forget about that uh, all the time. The, the rise of a city doesn't have to lead mechanistically to the loss of social freedoms or a ruling class. Um, and, and this idea, it's not a utopian idea. It's, it's just an idea about having more flexibility and more freedom to try out new ideas and social configurations. That's the idea that I'm trying to recreate here in this, this weird little city, because lately it feels like we're a bit stuck repeating the same mistakes over and over. Um, we're coming up with these new worlds and ideas in video games and popular discussions and arts, but we're also extremely anxious about our ability to actually inhabit any of these, these new spaces that, and ideas that we're coming up with. And so I think making new analogies to things, to generate new ideas, making more art, it, it does play a role in getting over this anxiety. Uh, if we focus too much on trying to entertain ourselves or too much on communicating ideas to small groups without making them accessible to broader audiences, there's a breakdown in communication and meaningful changes is more difficult to implement. Lavender Island is, is an absurd city that exists in my mind that I sort of turned into a real thing. It's goofy, it's seemingly impossible, but I think that's sort of the point. I, I want to make things that seem impossible real. Well, uh, that's my talk. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, feel free to get in touch if you want some game keys for this project um, or have any questions or just whatever. Um, I'm very much online all the time. Thank you. <laughs>